Welcome back to Cynthia Untamed. This is your youthful and educational platform. My name is Cynthia Nyongesa and we are here to inspire the current generation of leaders. Do tell a friend to tell a friend. I run a digital platform called Cynthia Untamed where I amplify the stories of young change makers in Africa and the overall theme is to focus on sustainable development goal 4.7 on global citizenship ed education through amplifying the stories of young change makers in Africa I'm able to show the rest of the world that we can be global citizens and we are the people who can change these communities and change these countries and today I will be talking to you about how to start a youth-led organization if you are a young person who's looking for a way to start impacting your community where do you start and this is a question that's frequently asked but rarely answered so stay tuned in the video just so that you can learn more on how to start and run your own youth-led organization first things first you need to ask yourself why do you want to do what you want to do? Why do you want to start that youth led organization? Do you want to be famous? Do you want to network? Do you want, are you feeling a void inside yourself? Why, why, why do you want to start that youth led organization? Organization in this world could mean an organization in itself, a non governmental organization, an international organization, a foundation a community-based organization. I mean, there are very many types of organizations that you can start, or you can alternatively just run a digital platform, a YouTube channel, a blog like me. That's what I do. I'm all in the digital space. So first things first, why do you want to do that? I recommend this book called Start With Why. I believe I did uh, a couple of book reviews in one of the YouTube videos here. I will leave it somewhere above here so that you go check out a couple of books that you can read. And one of the books that I was reading was called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. The other thing that you need to do is identify the problem. What problem do you want to solve? A mistake that a lot of young people make is wanting to solve all the problems in the world. I know, I know, I know you want to be the next Barack Obama. You want to be the next Nelson Mandela. You want to be the next Professor Wangare Mathai. You want to be the next Chimamanda. You want to be the next Miriam Makeba. You want to be the next who? Who, who else do you want to be? I do not know who you want to be. You want to be all these people. But guys, you are not Superman. You are not superwoman. There is no way somebody in Turkana will call you and you'll just fly there and solve the problem. Nobody from Namanga is going to call you and you'll just fly and go solve their problem. It will not happen. You are not superman. You are not superwoman. You are just a person. So identify the problem first of all. And I'd advise you to identify one, two, three. Don't identify too many problems and try to solve all of them. You cannot do it. You're one person identify that problem. So for me, for example, I'm very keen on education and I'm really focusing on global citizenship education through CynthiaUntamed.com and through this YouTube channel that I am trying to complement with, um, with the writing on the digital platform. The other thing that you need to do is now look at what already exists. What other youth-led organizations exist in your communities? For example, uh, a friend of mine from Madare was telling me in this locality, I think she was telling me there are like 10, and a lot of those organizations focus on like sexual reproductive health care rights, education, and justice, issues of justice and civic awareness. Those are the main challenges that young people in urban informal settlements go through. So that's what they're trying to solve. Look at what is already there. Because trust me, you're not going to start an organization that's uh, all about menstrual hygiene and think that you're the only one who's doing menstrual hygiene. A lot of people are doing menstrual hygiene awareness issues, rights. A lot of people are doing education. A lot of people are doing feeding programs. A lot of people are doing everything in this world. <laughs> so identify what is already there. Once you identify what is already there, then identify the gaps. So for example, you might see that uh, I'm trying to give a good example um, so for example you might find that um, in a specific school for example yes these children they have access to education they have books 
they have food probably the the school cooks like two meals maybe lunch and porridge somewhere in between the day but a lot of children are going through um issues of like diarrhea stomach upsets typhoid uh colds flus that's something that probably you've seen probably and you have to do it through through research like talking to the teacher there and all that identify the gaps there so those institutions exist probably somebody is already bringing or donating books to that school so they may not really lack in that area but there's that segment of health this is an example you might be a student studying medicine or nursing or something in public health and you're like hey how come not so many children are coming to school then you do your analysis and you realize the kids who come to this school they usually don't wash their hands yes there is water but they don't wash their hands and you've probably done your observation and realize even the kids who wash their hands they just do this and disappear so you're like ah that is what must be making them sick so you you have an understanding of health whichever segment you are studying it from so you go and you teach the kids how to wash their hands this year there's been all talk about washing their hands <laughs> so i do not even know if there is a gap right now but anyway this is an example so you go teach the kids how to wash their hands you tell them they have to rub in between they have to wash underneath their nails they have to wash their thumbs wash at the top of their hands make sure their palms are clean and if possible up to here so that all the germs just disappear you know that is an area you've identified and after a period of time you realize oh not many kids are getting sick and that way a lot of kids now have wholesome education and are able to enjoy their lives that is one example apply it however you want to apply it the other thing you need to understand when you're starting a youth led organization do not be afraid to start small you see sometimes we are so ambitious <laughs> you want to start an organization and start impacting 3 million people in one go when you have no money when you have nothing you have nothing in short you have nothing you're just a young person never ever be afraid to start small the late professor wangare masai said i will be the hummingbird okay she didn't say that exactly but she talked about this story about the hummingbird who went and um uh, uh what did she what did that hummingbird do they stopped a fire in a forest drops of water or something <laughs> yeah you know the little story of the little hummingbird so don't be afraid to start small sometimes you impact your community it just starts with one person then you go to two then you go to three then you go to four before you know it you're at 10 before you know it you're at a thousand and you go and go and go and next thing you probably a minister of children or something i do not know <laughs> that's just an example and this applies everywhere probably you want to educate your community about diplomacy international relations I'm telling you there are very many things in this world to be learned so don't be afraid to start small. The other thing now you need to know is how to fundraise. A lot of people and hey guys I do not even know if I'm a fan of this and probably I've, it's because I also run a digital platform so I've not been relying on funding but I know people write proposals. They write proposals to NGOs, to international organizations, to governments, to donors, to whoever to give them money. So that's one way of getting money. You can also fundraise through M-Pesa. If you are in Kenya, you know there's mobile money transfer, so you can use M-Pesa, M-Changa guys, please 50 bob for a packet of pads, 50 bob for a uh, a packet of pencils, 50 bob for what 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 and you get a, some stuff and you put them together. So find different ways of fundraising if you have come from a family that can at least give you some little money do that just find different ways of fundraising and starting your own initiative then the next thing you need to do is to increase visibility and this really is the main strength or the main role of Cynthia and team is to amplify the stories of young change makers like you and me who are doing exemplary stuff in the community and oh guess what nobody knows yeah but even if i do not amplify your story find other people who amplify stories if you can amplify your story on national tv do that if you can do it on a national newspaper do that if you can do it on a radio station do that and guys i will do another video on how like to increase your visibility in terms of newspapers and all but i have also done a video on personal branding hacks so that might also help your institution just check personal branding hack somewhere here or in the description bar below 
And let me tell you, being visible is so important. You know what hurts a lot of young people, and I've mentioned this a lot in my videos, is you saying that you want to be humble, that you're doing things, but you want to be humble. You don't want people to know. Hey, and guys, by the way, I'm not criticizing anyone who does that. Do what you wish. Hey, there's a freedom of choice in this world. You can do what you want. You can donate money to an institution and do it anonymously. It's okay. But now I'm targeting people who want to, to grow and they, they're looking for ways to, to expand. Be visible. When you go to a conference and you see a minister, why do I keep saying minister? When you see a cabinet secretary, <laughs> go and tell them what, what you do. Probably they do not know who you are. Network with the right people. And try and network with other young people. Let me tell you, it's even better to network with other young people because other young people are less busy and they're more likely to remember you. Trust me, when they go for another event, they are more likely to remember you because they don't have many problems. Most probably, they're not thinking about how, uh, for example, how the whole country needs to reopen schools. They're not thinking about that. Then they're just thinking about very, they're thinking about more compressed issues. So they're more likely to remember and say, oh, Cynthia is very interested in issues of education and I'm going for this conference at KICC. Let me text her, hey, Cynthia, do you want to come? Let's go together, blah, 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 blah they're more likely to remember you. So go for those people. Please do, please do, do not ignore young people like you. There are many young people in this country who are very exposed. You will be very surprised. Then the other thing that you need to do is now to register your organization. Now, in terms of registering, in the beginning, don't even stress so much, just stress yourself so much about registering because registering also comes with money it comes with a uh, legal compliance. It comes with a lot of things and you may not have the, most probably you may not have the financial capacity to do it. But if you can, please, 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 if you can't register, do that. Because there are some people when they want to give you funding, they cannot give you funding if you're not registered. So for example, if you're applying for an award like the Global Citizenship Prize, either by waste, wait leads, I don't know how to say that one. But wait leads, if you're applying for something like that or for Cisco Youth Global Citizenship Award, you must be registered. You have to submit like uh, registration documents, financial documents, a lot of things. So it would really help to register. But if you're just starting, nobody's going to ask for these things. Trust me. At least just try to have a small bank account where some money can be put. <laughs> try and do that. But also in terms of registration, um. And I'm yet to understand the effectiveness of this. There's some platforms that are trying to give young people visibility in terms of their youth-led organizations. So let me give an example. I'm forgetting the name. It's called Pa. Hey, I will leave the link to that website here. I don't know why I've forgotten the name. But this website is run by the um, Africa Leadership Institute Tutu Fellowship something. Yeah, yeah, two two fellows. Okay, so there's this fellowship, very prestigious, which I am aiming. By the way, if you ever watch this video, because what I have seen is they usually have like a call for applications for young people. Okay, not necessarily young, just for people from 25 years and above. So I turned 25 in October, and I am looking for somebody to nominate me whenever the next application. <laughs> Open. So if you are that person who can nominate me, because I checked in the website and they said, oh, our partners who are very influential, something, something. So if you're that partner of the Africa Leadership Institute Tutu Fellow who is powerful enough to nominate me, I am here. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So the Tutu Fellowship has this um, page or this initiative, because not everyone can be a Tutu Fellow. They have this, th I'm forgetting what it's called, but they have this thing where they're registering young people, young people's organizations, like, because now they're saying that a lot of young people are running organizations, but they're not visible. So when donors or private sector want to give money, they don't know where to get this money. So this is like a registry. They just go search youth-led organizations, nini, nini, then it comes up through that Africa Leadership Institute Tutu Fellows website. I'm forgetting the exact name, but it starts with the letter P. I know once I edit this video, it will be somewhere here on the screen. Yeah, so that's what they're doing. 
But I registered my digital platform there. And even when I checked, a lot of organizations had registered. And I'm still not so sure what is the effectiveness of me putting my organization or rather my digital platform there. How is it really helping me? Because it's just my name is just there, but I still do not have evidence of how people have been supported through similar platforms. I am not so sure. But in terms of registration, you can start with registering your organization or platform for somewhere there because you see like on that website, it's free. So you can just put your name there because it helps if I Google Cynthia Nyongesa and my page or rather my name somehow appears on the Tutu, <laughs> on the Tutu website somehow. I repeat, please, if you can nominate me for the Tutu Fellowship, I am here. <gasps> please. Whoever you are, the God sent angel, I am here. <laughs> I am here. Anyway, that's it for registration. Then for um, the other thing when you want to start a youth-led organization is if it's very important for you to attend events. Before this COVID struck, Kenya, Kenya and Rwanda, but Kenya specifically, are the hub of, of conferences in this side of the continent. Please attend those conferences, especially if they are free. Just attend, 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 go there and network because they really help you with such situations. And also not just those big events where like there are high level dignitaries attending, but you can also attend like public lectures in your school. If there's a professor of agroforestry or uh, somebody who's coming to give a public lecture in your school, please do attend. At the University of Nairobi, they do that a lot. And it's very easy for you to access those events because all you need is a student ID. So if you are a student, make sure you attend those events and network with the right people because these people will refer you to other conferences, other opportunities, and that's how your youth-led organization will grow. The other thing that is very important when you're starting your youth-led organization is the importance of collaborating. Remember I told you when you start a menstrual hygiene organization, you are not the only one. When you start a feeding program, you are not the only one. When you start a blog, you're not the only one. Collaborate, partner. And guys, I will also do another video on collaboration, but be also careful with who you're collaborating with. Some people may just want to use your energy and your naivety. So just be careful with who you collaborate because the more you collaborate, the bigger the work that you can do. And collaborating is not just collaborating with other big organizations. It's also collaborating with your friends. They probably know who can give you some little money for your institution. So don't be afraid to reach out to as many people as you can. Then the other thing you need to do is to be very innovative in your organization. When you're applying for opportunities and you're running a youth-led organization, they're going to ask, what makes your organization innovative? And being innovative is not just about technology. It's all about doing something differently. So what, it e what is it that you are doing very differently? Let me give an example of a lady I know. She's called Bina Maseno, and she runs this organization called Badili Africa. And yes, it's about girl child women empowerment. Uh -huh, but you know, guys, what I, okay, I like this because it's about something I like. So when I met her a couple of years back, she was explaining how what they do is that a lot of girls don't have self-confidence and all that, and she wants to nurture leaders. So instead of just going to a school to tell kids, oh, be confident, oh, do this, oh, do this, what she does is they go do, they usually go and do like a makeover, style their hair nicely, put some lipstick, you know, they, they just make them look nice. And guys, I do love makeup. I love looking pretty, <laughs> although I'm too lazy to apply all those things. But yeah, I do love instances where I can have professional makeup done on me. So they go do makeup on the girls. And the next thing they have to do is go speak about an important issue to their community. And voila, you have a group of confident girls who are talking about very important issues in the world. And that's how she does it. And that's being innovative. And you know, she's even managed to speak on global platforms like there's this one run by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation called, I think it's called Goals, Global Goals or something. She's spoken there and people like Barack Obama have spoken on that stage and Bill Gates and all those people. So being innovative is not just you coming up with some sort of technology. It's just about doing something 
differently. <laughs> that is all about how to start a youth-led organization how do you start it how do you run it how do you grow it please do let me know if you've enjoyed this video leave a thumbs up leave a like and do tell a friend to tell a friend remember cynthia untamed is your youthful and educational platform i will see you again in the next video bye